Good evening, Rosso. Rosso. St. Mary's North. City South. Special good evening to the people from Rural West. Good evening to one and all. I'm here tonight to lend support to my fellow candidates. Sister Gladys Potter, the right choice for St. John's Rural South. Brother Jonathan Joseph, the right choice for St. Mary's North. Brother Franz the Fretus, the right choice for St. John's City South. I've seen these candidates at work articulating their plans for the constituents and for the development of Antigua and Barbuda. So I say to you, in rural south, you're going to vote Gladys Potter and the UPP. You know, rural south is my very close neighbor. And we have a lot of things in common. And I pledge to ensure that rural south comes home for the United Progressive Party. Just as rural west will be coming home, that St. Mary's North comes home for the UPP. That city south comes home for the UPP. Together, we will redeem this nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Together, we will restore jobs, respect, water, and free choice. The team to redeem is ready. We are ready under the astute leadership of the next Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Brother Harold Lovell. So, on election day, it's UPP all the way. You know, recently in the budget, the Prime Minister boasted of some kind of growth. He talked about a 5.3% growth. But the people are asking, where is the growth? And let me ask you, are you feeling that growth in your pocket? Economic growth means nothing if the people are not feeling it in the pocket. Growth means nothing when there is rising cost of living. It means nothing when there is rising unemployment. It means nothing when there is inequality in wealth distribution. And people don't forget, the Prime Minister promised us years ago that he was going to do something about the wealth gap. He was going to bridge that gap. He was going to make sure that you narrow the gap between the rich and the poor. And instead of him narrowing the gap, he has widened the gap. We cannot have meaningful growth if small and micro businesses are struggling and you know many of them have closed. We cannot have meaningful growth if there is demand on social service, if that demand is escalating. And during our period of hardship during the time of COVID, during the past of the pandemic, we asked for stimulus, and the man said, no, no, I'm not getting a stimulus. The poor house, the economic poor house that is boasted about, our economic powerhouse could not emulate St. Kitts and Nevis. You know what happened St. Kitts and Nevis? Little St. Kitts and Nevis. They gave a stimulus. Just Christmas gone there. All public servants got a double salary. I'm continuing right now. Every household that has a combined income of less than $3,000 gets $500 extra every month. And in addition to that, in St. Kitts and Nevis, Public bus owners get $400 fuel subsidy every month. What we get in Antigua and Barbuda? We get tear gas and vaccine mandate. That's what we get in Antigua and Barbuda. So in relation to the management of COVID-19 in Antigua, the Gas and Bone Administration in the budget have defended, have defended the vaccine mandate. People don't forget that for two years, they had us in a state of public emergency. Two years! And as if that was not enough, they took away your right to choose. They took away your God-given right. 
and they said, no job, no job. They clobbered the people into submission, and Gaston Brown, like Pharaoh, had the people in bondage. Every time cabinet met, listen this, because I'm sure many of you would have experienced this. Every time cabinet met, Wednesdays, Wednesday night, and Thursday morning, people are under stress. Blood pressure gone up. Mental anguish, wondering what next. What next coming from this cabinet? Imagine, this cabinet brought down the hammer with this vaccine mandate. When at that time, when the mandate came in, Antigua had the highest vaccina vaccination rate in the Caribbean, at 44%. There was no need for the vaccine mandate. They forced the people to take into the bodies what they did not want. And so, the mandate got them an additional 18%. But listen to this. Barbados, without the vaccine mandate, got to 52%. BVI, without the vaccine mandate, got to 58%. Jamaica, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, the list goes on. Didn't enforce any vaccine mandate. And guess what? They're not worse off than Antigua and Barbuda. As a matter of fact, Antigua and Barbuda has the highest death rate, COVID-19 death rate, in the OECS. The highest. And when you look at the Caribbean, the only other country that's slightly above Antigua and Barbuda is Jamaica. So the draconian vaccine mandate was unnecessary. It was wrong, unwarranted, unconscionable, ungodly, and inhumane. And voters, don't ever forget, no matter what they come with, don't you ever forget that the Gaston Brown-led administration sent home workers without pay some lost employment. Don't ever forget that they deprived your children of an education. Don't ever forget that they rendered unvaccinated Antiguans and Barbudans overseas, rendered them stateless. Don't ever forget that they divided this nation, that they drove fear into the people of Antigua and Barbuda. They mentally tortured you. They showed no mercy. They showed no compassion. By the way, they have decided that they're going to end the mandates. But I want to call on them. If you're ending the mandates, end the twice per month testing for public and private sector workers and for public and private school children. If you want to end the mandate, pay government workers who are forced to stay home for two weeks months without pay and even deny the option of working remotely. I want to quickly bring something to your attention. You know, for years, we've been talking about, for six years now, we've been talking about the e-books. We have no real answers. But the question must be asked, why are we still paying for tuna picks? Why are we still paying for tuna picks? Do you know that the government of Antigua and Barbuda is paying millions in arrears to for tuna picks? Do you know that there is still ongoing negotiations with for tuna picks to reduce the 2020, 2021 user license fees? Brothers and sisters, Antiguans and Barbudans, the contract should have ended in 2020. We're now in 2022. And there must be a new contract because we are still paying for tuna picks. Why are taxpayers' dollars being allocated to pay user fees to for tuna picks for 2020, 2021, when the contract should have ended in 2020? How in good conscience could the contract be renewed? The people of Antigua and Barbuda need answers. And I think it is full time to ventilate this e-box debacle and let the chips fall where they may. Let us get to the truth. Over $70 million must be accounted for. And that $70 million could have given us seven secondary schools, seven new secondary schools. Transparency and accountability in government demand that we have this matter settled once and for all. 
I come quickly to my constituency. And there are many needs in the constituency, many areas that need attention. And as people in the West know by now, I've been lobbying for them to fix the Lavalari Road. I made noise about that. And guess what? Recently, I am ple I'm pleased to report that we recently work, work has commenced on the Lavalari Road. So relief is coming to the people of Green Bay. But I want to remind them that there's also Baker Street. Baker Street people are crying out. The ball in murder. The drain needs to be fixed. So I'm calling at them when they turn Lavalari Road, go over to Baker Street. And when you've done that, go over in the look and cranny of the constituency and fix the roads that are in deplorable condition. There's another vexing matter in the constituency. And nobody seems to care. The Labour Party operatives, they don't give two hoots. We're talking about our community centre. We need our community centre. I wrote to the Attorney General since the 6th of January. And as expected, not a drum is heard. Not a drum. The same man who in April of 2019 said that the magistrate's court being in Grace Farm will help to establish law and order in Grace Farm. He damn forward and pass the place. He passed the place. We don't need a magistrate's court to maintain law and order in Grace Farm. We have a police station. That is how they think of us. And we say, come election day, we must give them the boat. We must give them the boat. I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, that this current administration is toying with the people of rural West. They have no urgent intention to remove the magistrate's court from our community centre. But under Richard Lewis and the United Progressive Party, the community centre will be handed to the people of St. John's Rural West. So with Richard Lewis and the UPP will pursue scholarship programs for constituents. We'll create a constituency youth advisory council. This council will enable youth perspective to be represented at the highest decision level of the constituency. We'll seek to identify and make available lands for first-time homeowners and I want to draw your attention to the 93.75 acres of land of pensioners that they had for the Iraqi village for 4,000 Iraqi families. I say those lands are to be subdivided and given to the people of St. John's Rural West first of all and then we can extend it outside of the constituency. So my brothers and sisters, I just want to say to you that these and more of Richard Lewis will do with the right party one in the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. United Progressive Party. Vote for change. Vote for United Progressive Party. It is a right choice. Let us put in rural south. Jonathan Joseph in St. Mary's North. Frank Sepetus in City South. Vote Richard Lewis. The right choice in rural west. I remain no advocate, no believer, your champion, defender, and friend. Rural West the board. Rural West the board. Hashtag from one.